So we're going to uh, continue on with the talk about documentation. And, you know, I, I listed, you know, in the uh, handout, uh, the main thing I want to focus on is the outlines, because that says these are the pieces that are important for each document. I also list the problems. I mean, the problems, you can read the problems, and it's, those are actual problems that I experienced, so you know, I didn't make them up. Um, but I want to really focus on the outlines and the content, because that's what's going to give you uh, the most information. So, okay, so initiating validation, those five bullet points, those are the key points of the outline. And again, we're going to make some model documents, and we're going to say, fellas, this is what we want you to write. Simple, direct, and to the point. Okay. Uh, here, just to show you the simplicity. Validation request. Process validation, product A. New product. Reason, new product to be manufactured at the site. Period. That's all they need. Then this other little stuff, oh yeah, it's going to be compliant with policies, going to be regulatory approved. Uh, we need to do cleaning. I mean, very minimal information. That's all you need at this stage. We don't want, you know, sometimes people go nuts writing. We don't want that. When we want people to go nuts writing is in the validation plan. That's where we want very clear and complete writing and explanation, because that's the key document. This stuff, that's all you need. Okay? Qualification of a new blender, new equipment, high impact, new size. Okay? Very simple. Essentially, that's, that's all we need to start the validation. Okay? What's key is the plan. You see that on the bottom? C, validation plan. That's going to tell us the details of how we're going to validate that or qualify that piece of equipment. Simple and clear. So here is your plan now. This is the validation plan. This is the key document. This is the, here is what I'm going to do to validate the process or qualify the equipment or qualify the control system or whatever. This is what I'm going to do. This is the key document. This is where you want your writers to spend the most time. This is what the auditor is going to look at. This is where you're going to provide all your justification for your sampling and your acceptance criteria and all that stuff. Once this is done well, the protocol will be written to agree with this and the results will be written to agree with the protocol. So this is key. This kind of tells the total picture here. Five pieces. Introduction. Now remember, we're doing this for an auditor. We want them to understand. Uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, who gave us the morning uh, uh, talk. We want to make that auditor fuzzy. Okay, it's the first time I ever heard fuzzy being used as a descriptive word that way. But I used to write stuff like, product A is a tablet product. It's used for the treatment of high blood pressure. It's taken three times a day. It's a red tablet. It's scored. I mean, real simple kindergarten level stuff. But, you know, that's what the auditor uh, needs to make him feel comfortable. Okay, then we're going to get into what's the ingredients, what's the function of the ingredients, what's the process. We have a flow diagram on the process. I mean, very elementary, and you know, when I started doing this, I talked to auditors, and they told me, well, we need to understand the product, and I said, well, tell me about that, and, you know, and I'd go to meetings with FDA people, and I'd ask them questions about this, and this is the feedback I would get, you know, what were good documents, so I incorporated that, and this was revolutionary in my company, because they would never do stuff like that, oh, it's too simple, we don't need to do that, wrong, you know, it's only, we're talking about a half a page of writing. So why not? And, and I had very good success with acceptability of my protocols. So technical information, you know, a little bit about the product. Validation strategy. What are we doing here? You know, what's our approach? Then the validation documentation, the listing, and I'll show you what I mean by that. And then finally the references. So now we're talking about the stage one documents, any you know, technical information from textbooks, anything that is going to be scientific and technical that's going to support your validation, 
you put in the reference section. And I wrote a few models and say, this is what I want. And you know, they went through the approval process and everybody was happy with them and that became the standard. And this is what I would hand out to people, say, look, make it like this one, appropriate for your product, but follow this outline. So this is your outline from which your model document would be prepared. So I wanted to see those five bulleted sections in every validation plan for product, for cleaning, for, for equipment, whatever. This was the format. Okay, so here's what's in the introduction section, okay. Here's the technical information, formula process, whatever, total validation approach, you know. What do we know from experimental studies? What do we know from past data? Let's, for example, let's say we had a birth control pill that was the same matrix, but it was a little different hormone, okay? If we have tons of experience with making other birth control pills with the same formula and the same equipment, the same process, we're gonna mention all that, right? We're gonna say, you know what? This is why we're only gonna do one lot of this new product because it's just like all the others and we got a hundred lots of experience. And the drug, which is only a tenth of a milligram, doesn't impact the process validation. So that's good enough, okay? So any information I can put to make my validation stronger is gonna go in this section here of technical aspects and the validation approach and so forth. Number of lots, what's my risk? If I have a low risk, I'm gonna do the smallest number of lots. If it's a brand new product they have no experience with where the active drug is a good a high percentage of the formula, it's gonna be a three lot job. And maybe with some post-validation extra testing. Okay, you gotta evaluate the risk. Everything we do is risk. Okay, if you're gonna leave with, with something in your head from this, I mean, I, I hope you would have uh, uh, design and understand and demonstrate and then uh, maintain all structured around risk analysis. Do more when the risk is high. Do less when the risk is low. If you're making a sterile product, high risk. You're going to do more. If you're putting bottles in a cardboard carton, you're going to do almost nothing. Okay? Makes sense, right? Okay. So here's a little bit more on the plan, the details. Testing and rationale. What's the general testing? Uh, uh, what's the rationale for the test? Why are we doing these tests? What's the sampling? Why are we sampling the way we're sampling? All it has, it's all connected to risk, and I'm gonna show you that a little bit later about how we're gonna look at risk and adjust our testing and our sampling appropriately and acceptance criteria. How are we gonna treat the data? We want statistical data treatment if possible. Uh, a little talk about the acceptance criteria. And then, remember, this is high level, this is the plan. The details are gonna be in the protocol. So the numbers are gonna be in the protocol. This is the list of documents. Now this became a, a, just a lifesaver. When I went into one job, uh, the first thing they said to me is, you know, you got a big backlog of protocols that aren't closed out. And I said, well, what do you mean? Well, there's about 300 outstanding protocols or packages, and they were all a mess. So what I started doing in the plan, remember we're talking about the plan now, is identifying all the things we needed to complete the validation. And all those things were identified and they all got a number. And so in this case, the validation request was number one. The dryer engineering study to make sure the dryer works, that was document two. We had to qualify a new dryer, that was three. Bunch of other stuff. Then I was able to have a administrative person bug the people who were responsible to get these things done. And when all these things were assembled, we were able to close the package. Okay, so this was strictly administrative but you see, it causes you to think, what do I need to get this validation done? And remember, the validation approval committee is gonna approve this whole plan. So they're gonna say, we agree, this will complete the job. And when it gets complicated, we want a project summary report to kind of put everything together and explain what's in this package. 
All right, instead of having seven different protocols and have an auditor say, well, what did you do here? We got a report that says protocol one, dryer. Uh, engineering study to show how it works and a, a qualification protocol to qualify it. Uh, number two, a process validation report, okay? Uh, we updated the master plan to include the, the new information. Uh, uh, and so there is a document to do that and then a project summary. So this is part of that overall, let's figure out what we need to do, let's think about it, let's identify it, let's document it. Everything's gotta be clearly identified in the plan. And then we're gonna work to that plan to complete the whole validation. Okay, and then references. And this is where we would put the R&D reports or the references. So when we need a report that says the critical process parameters for this product are, we're gonna reference it here. And we're gonna say, look, R&D guys, it's going in our plan and the auditors are gonna see that. And they might ask to say, let me see that report that discusses the critical process parameters. Or let me see the report that characterizes the validation, the compressing process with a factorial design study. Okay, all the stuff from stage one that is relevant to validation, you're gonna, oh, sorry, you're gonna list in the reference section. Okay, so here's how we're connecting stage one with stage two. Okay, so now, uh, let's see. This is some of the examples of things that we might have as references from R&D. So, you know, scale-up report, technology transfer reports, identification and sources of variation, right? That was in QBD, okay? Remember, the auditors know about QBD. They're gonna expect to see, oh, what are your sources of variation in this product? I want a report that tells us about that. And then how are we controlling it? If we say, you know, a source of variation is our polymer that controls the dissolution rate. And how are we controlling it? Well, we're gonna have a specification and we're going to limit our, our uh, purchases to only one vendor and it's gonna be this material and we're gonna have specs and this spec is appropriate to control incoming material. That's what I want written from R&D because that is a critical material and one of the things in QBD are the critical material attributes. And auditors know about this, okay? So I'm gonna say to them, this is what I want. What's your, valid, your variation control plan? Okay, make sense? All right, this is where R&D's gotta help us and they're part of what we're doing. Okay. Uh, now, you have to look at the original data when you get these reports. These R&D guys, they are not, like I told you, they transpose numbers, they make mistakes, they don't sign things off, they record stuff on paper towels. Uh, they're not like QA people when it comes to data. You gotta take a look at that original data because an auditor is gonna look at your report and then he's gonna look at the justification for your report, which is their report, and then he's gonna say, oh, let me see the raw data that supports their report. So they better be prepared to show that raw data in a laboratory notebook or some other system. I've had them where they bring out paper towels that are wet out of a garbage can. You know, really, it's unbelievable what kind of laboratory practices people have, because they're out of the mainstream. I mean, QA people never do this kind of stuff. I mean, you have data sheets. You, you have the person who enters the data, you have somebody verify the data. R&D doesn't like that, okay? But if they're gonna be part of validation, they gotta learn documentation practices, and you may have to train them. 